Some time has passed and we have had a chance to kind of digest what we saw in Tales of the Empire. Tales of the Jedi was pretty spectacular in its own way. Two great characters like Count Dooku, Ahsoka, we even saw a young Qui-Gon. Tales of the Empire showed a less than magnanimous character in Elsbeth, but Barriss Offee is something totally different. In fact, we have been clamoring and wanting for an answer for so long and it was directly answered. It's not like we learned that Quinlan Vos was still alive, like in the Obi-Wan series, with a side mention, but we got directly confirmation that not only is she alive, she went on to survive a whole lot more. However, one of the biggest differences in that series was that the way she started out, the way we saw Barriss Offee in the Clone Wars, she was younger, youngish, and age-wise she is comparable to Ahsoka, of course, they both grew up together and were friends within the Jedi Order. Order. But something changed along the way. You see, an Inquisitor at the end comes for Barriss Offee. So this indicates that we are still in Imperial times, perhaps even before A New Hope, because in the original trilogy we don't see Inquisitor. So since Lin is still active, this means that the Grand Inquisitor and the others are still active too, meaning this is before A New Hope. However, if we see Barriss Offee, it looks like more than 30, 40 years have passed because she has aged horribly. Presumably since Order 66 and before New Hope, let's say 15 years have passed, but for Barriss Offee it looks like it was double that. And of course you might say, well, she just aged, similar to Obi-Wan, but the problem is, if we go and look at Ahsoka during that age, and we have comparable evidence because when you see Star Wars Rebels, you see an older, more mature Ahsoka. After Rebels, we have not seen Ahsoka in animated version, only in live action in The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. So why is Ahsoka similar in age to Barriss Offee, looking much sprier and younger than Barriss Offee? This answer was pretty much cleared in Tales of the Empire because of her occupation, and her occupation tells a lot why Barriss Offee ended up being the healer of anybody who needs help. The Clone Wars showed us that Barriss Offee was out of her Jedi ways. She had gone so far as to bomb the Jedi Temple, frame Ahsoka, her friend, but Tales of the Empire showed a different side. For a brief time, she was an Inquisitor, and even during that time, she constantly was questioning of the Empire, of the Grand Inquisitor, of Lin and everybody, and in the end she chose the path of the middle, perhaps not a complete Jedi, but she did use Jedi traits in the end, because she chose to be a literal healer, similar to a Jedi, after metaphorically, of course, healing herself from the dark side, as we see in Tales of the Empire, the third episode, she is completely cured. She has has no darkness in her anymore. And this is practically the reason. Her past haunted her so much that she became a healer in order to better herself, and her occupation as a healer, lending her force energy to others, might have led to her aging poorly. In her third episode, what does she go by? What is she known by? She's called the healer. The episode opens up on a snowy planet. It's desolate. It's pretty much a snowy desert. You can't see anything until one of Barriss's friends comes out of the ground and he leads them to the healer, leads the father and the mother who have a child in need. Where in the end, of course, we realize that this child is not sick. She has a high midichlorian count and perhaps force sensitive. At first we don't know what's going on of course once they call her the healer and we don't even know for sure that is Barriss Offee of course we know it's going to end up being her but it isn't until we see her inside that hut that we realize she has become sort of a Yoda character. She is alone on a desolate planet and she has become completely in tune with the force. When Lin comes in she doesn't even have a lightsaber. Barriss doesn't even fight fight, 
she just evades her attacks. By the way, did you notice the response from Barasafi telling that anger makes you predictable to Lin, similar to what the Grand Inquisitor told Barasafi years ago, but in complete reverse, that her Jedi traits make her predictable. But this is exactly what I'm saying, is that Barasafi was on another level. And I saw a lot of fans frustrated. Of course, speaking of frustration from these episodes, it felt like they completely held back. It felt like Dave Filoni didn't want to show his hand. And this is why talking about her meeting with Darth Vader not going that great. I mean, they didn't even speak. Darth Vader only glanced at her. She didn't even realize and perhaps never found out that Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker. We don't know at this point. To the very last moment when we see Lin come for her and not Darth Vader. The slight potential that was shown by Barriss Offee really gives you an indication that if she actually survived that stabbing, and I think she did, we got a hint that she did, but you know, it's Star Wars, but if she survived, it gives you just a hint. Dave Filoni might have done this on purpose, of course, but again, we were expecting a lot more. Now, what can we expect from Barriss Offee in Ahsoka Season 2? presumably if Ahsoka and her meet up in live action. This is where you should be really clamoring to see Barriss Offee because by the hints we got in the third episode, how powerful Barriss Offee has become, it's just mind-boggling. And she is not at the point of a Jedi Knight or a Jedi Master or anything like that. She is completely in tune with the Force. Back in the day in Legends, we used to call these guys Jedi Sentinels because the Jedi Sentinels were completely focused on Force acuity, more so than swordsmanship or dueling, or whatever the case may be. This shows you that Barriss Offee is no joke, and when her being stabbed does not lead to death, well, I think this is the first time we can actually excuse this. It actually makes sense for the healer to not be killed by a simple stabbing to the side of the stomach. Again, not a vital organ, but the side of the stomach. Okay, I guess they could have handled it a different way. I'm pretty much sure that could have been done but again, Dave Filoni might have just wanted to show us how great Barriss Offee is at this point, that she could survive a stabbing to the stomach also. And she recognized the conflict within Lynn. It was very much a Luke Vader moment, where Barriss Offee sacrificed herself just to save Lynn at that moment. And she did. Through her sacrificing herself, probably not getting completely killed because Lynn in the end saved her, but she was ready to die for Lynn. Lynn to go back to the light and she did and she got her out of that maze and perhaps got her help or the healer doesn't need help because she probably healed herself there's a lot of possibilities this story could go but in the end I think what it's gonna happen is that Barris and Lynn are now gonna team up and in the end we're gonna see her in Ahsoka season 2 and perhaps the Mandalorian movie which would be even more spectacular and great I sometimes understand the frustration of many fans. There's a lot of fans who love this, there's a lot of fans who don't love it, but in the end you have to realize that what the canon wants to do is just to grow, and we have a lot of characters at this moment. Whatever you want to say, whether, whether you don't like the storylines or, or do, there's a lot of characters in play, and there's a lot of storylines to be told also. Canon has expanded by this point 10 years later to be a gigantic behemoth, and you can do an animated show or a movie about pretty much many, many characters, all of the characters that are going on right now that are popular. And I know some of you didn't enjoy her surviving the stabbing. We want Qui-Gon back, damn it. <laughs> Tell me all your thoughts down below, guys, and thank you so much for watching.